now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good day, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the February 2nd, magnificent Monday edition of Hour 2 of the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I hope that you're off to a great start of your day. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do everything we can to have an extraordinary day. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember what's talked about is a dream. What's envisioned is exciting. Of course, what's planned becomes possible. What's scheduled, well, what's scheduled is just special. And I want to thank you for scheduling your time with me this morning. I'm grateful for your presence here. And, of course, I am here to serve you. So feel free to call on in at 877-927-6648 internationally. You can dial on out as, to us at 727-445-1044. Remember, if you've got a question, someone else has that exact same question. So don't call in for me. Don't call in for yourself. But instead... Do it for someone else. A random act of kindness. That's the way to begin your day. It's a way to begin your week out here. This is Magical Monday. Of course, it's Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the uh, Dow is trading up 123 points. She's trading down at 17,044. S&P down 12 and a half points, trading at 1982. Composite off 50 points this morning, trading at 4586. Russell down 11 points right now, trading at 1154. DAX is flat. FTSE is uh, down. Down, uh, nine points out here. Gold's back five bucks. Uh, silver just turned slightly green. It's up three pennies. Light sweet crude up 29 cents. Trade out at 48.53. Uh, leading the charge to the upside. It's a Pioneer Natural Resource up five bucks. Canadian Pacific Railway up four dollars in change. Concho, Concho Resources up three bucks. Up three dollars and 37 cents. Uh, Tenneco up at 288. Walter Investment Management up two dollars and 56 cents. at 17 percent. Uh, Jump Core Laboratories up a couple of bucks uh, to the downside price line. Leading the charge here off 12 bucks this morning. Google off $12. Intercept Pharmaceuticals down to 10 bucks as we speak right now. Uh, IBB, the uh, NASDAQ Biotech ETF is off uh, about one and three quarters percent, down $5 and change. LinkedIn off uh, four bucks. Again, 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the ETF sector out here. Let's go see what we We've got to uh, start off with the Dow Diamonds uh, down a buck 17 right now. What are the diamonds doing out here? Let's go take a look at Lucy in the sky with diamonds out here. The diamonds now tra trading below the December 16th low out there. That low is established at 170.74. You're 170.17. Volume on that trading session, 12.2 million shares. What we saw on Friday was a move back with 11.1 .1 million shares. The day before, 9.6. The day before that, 9.6 million shares. So far today, though, 1.8 million shares, 2 million shares, basically, in only about 40 minutes of trading out there. Again, the uh, key volume benchmark is 12 million shares out there. You close below 170.74 with more than 12 million shares. Then if we take a look at uh, what's likely to happen, you know, not really much in the case of an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. There is one that's out there. Let's take a look at what that is. Your A point is from here on the trading session of December 26. Your B point that you would use, what would you use out here? You'd have to use the low out here from January 16th. And your C point out here would be January 22nd. Your one to one A to B equals CD takes you to 169.55 out there. Uh, next move down would be 167. If we take a look at retracements, that's retracements from the low in October. Come on, baby. Work with me here. We just rebooted you. You should have a nice fresh start from the uh, lows to the high, I meaning the lows of October to the high. You'd get a, a Gartley buy pattern. Well, you'd really have a Gartley buy pattern at 169.55 if, in fact, uh, you were to uh, see some kind of reversal signal. But uh, more likely, you're looking at about the 166.84 to 167.21 mark. That's what's going on inside of the Dow Diamonds. Let's go take a look at the uh, spies out here. Let's go see what the uh, S, uh, in essence, the S&P is doing. It's also trading into its uh, December 16th swing point. Now, that swing point, man, oh, man, oh, shivets. Here we go. Come on, do this. 
for me, would you? That low is at 197.86. Volume on that swing point is 259 million shares. The SPY have not tested 197.86. The low so far, I take that back, 197.86 on the uh, number. Volume thus far, about 29 million shares. So you got uh, pretty decent volume for the first 45 minutes of trading. What you're looking at, the benchmark is 259 million shares. Will the SPYs break through that swing point or will it be a failure? Will it just be a test and a rejection on light volume? We won't know until uh, this afternoon at uh, 4 p.m. during the Tom O'Brien show. Um, there's just no way to really gauge the uh, price out there. Let's take a look at what's going on inside of the QQQ ETF, the QQQs. In this case here, we look at the same benchmarks, but there's one other we've got to add. If we take a look at December 16th, that is by that low, by the way, is 99.96. But there was a lower low swing point that was formed back here in uh, January that was on the uh, 16th as well. The 16th seemed to have, uh, I don't know, just coincidence out here, 99.36. So volume-wise, you're looking at 35 million or really 65 million from December 16th. So far, the volume today, 8.8 .8 million shares. Uh, hard it's going to be heavy volume or not. We just have to wait and see how the rest of the day plays out. If, in fact, these lows are broken here inside of the uh, QQQ, you'd have to say most likely what you'd see is price move down to the 0.618 retracement level. That would take you down to about $96.35. That's with a close below, 99 36. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000, the IWM. What's the IWM doing? 114.85 is what it is trading at. Volume inside of the IWM. This is stronger than the other three that we took a look at. Uh, what I mean by that is if you look at uh, December 16th, it's not near the lows. That's 113.03. Volume down there on that trading session, 62 million shares. Uh, Friday's session, 49 million shares. Uh, so far this morning, we've seen 8.6 million shares. 8.6 in 45 minutes going against 6.2 from December the uh, 16th. So, uh, even still, even if I just do a straight line math and account for about, uh, you know, 45 minutes, that still looks to me like just slightly uh, lighter volume than that 62 million shares. But, hey, anything can happen inside of the uh, market. Of course, we know that the IWM Russell 2000, she's been trading a sideways consolidation for what seems like forever out here. Nonetheless, uh, this, is, this is the strongest of the uh, four, meaning the diamonds, the Qs, and the uh, spies out there. And that's what's going on inside of it. Let's take a look at the... Um, Let's take a look at uh, what I showed earlier during the uh, first hour uh, chart here. Let's uh, try to figure out what we've got here. So here is the uh, S&P 500 futures contract. Here is the uh, SPY. What it's uh, doing right now, it's testing the uh, swing point. That it's a swing point from back on January 29th. That had 189,000 uh, contracts there. Uh, you're down right now with 167,000 contracts. And there's 15 minutes. So you're coming into that uh, swing point with volume. What we do know about the SPYs. Let me do or the uh, ES mini out here. Again, this is the 30-minute uh, chart. Price ought to make a, a move down to the bottom of this uh, price channel out here. That would take you into about the 1965-ish uh, type range. Just depends on what time. But I would expect the way that the pattern is playing out, the, it, what it should do is at least get down and uh, test that uh, level. At this stage here, you're moving into a bit of on a 30-minute chart, moving into a bit of an oversold uh, condition. But you got a nice uh, formed both at the top and at the bottom, descending price channel. We'll expect that area to be a level from where a bounce would begin. And that is looking at the 30-minute time frame for the S&P futures contract. If we go take a look at uh, gold, silver, let's go look at that. In the case of uh, gold, what we're taking a look at, let me just switch over here. Gold is trading with inside a descending price channel. Uh, descending price channel beginning back here, you'd have to say, on uh, January 23rd, as it was forming a bearish engulfing candle with some follow-through on January 26th out here. Had a nice uh, day on uh, Friday, but it was just really an inside day. That uh, suggests that the uh, existing trend uh, chain, uh, continues. That trend had begun trending to the uh, downside from a retracement standpoint. If we take a look at retracements going from just simply the swing point its most recent swing point from january 2nd 
to the high out here. What we can see is that the 0 0.382 retracement is the level that was hit back on January 29th. Unless we see gold break through this descending price channel, chances are that price is going to go ahead and pull back to lower lows out here. Where would that pullback take you to? Could be the 1246, could be the 1240 uh, ish type range. Uh, 1239 would be a, a likely stop for a pullback inside of uh, gold. If we take a look at uh, silver out here, uh, silver right now is trading up. Uh, come on, switch over for me, would you? There we go. Silver is uh, basically flat, trading out at $17.21. Uh, silver, big wide-ranging bar. Uh, that has to be respected. That was on the trading session of January uh, 29th out there. No signs of reversals when we take a look at the uh, candles inside of uh, silver. Uh, at this stage here, if we take a look at retracements, that's from the low out here on December the 1st to the high inside of silver. Over looks like maybe right around January 22nd. Uh, you came into it came into that 0.382 retracement with a wide ranging bar. This suggests that it wants to get down to maybe the 1581 level. It's 0.618 retracement right now trading out at 1723. If we take a look at light sweet crude, she is flat as we speak right now. In the case of light sweet crude, what we're focused on, what we're paying attention to is the following. We're paying attention to 4720 ish. Uh, so to speak. That's your 13 period exponential moving average. We saw price close above that level here on Friday. We have not really seen that happen since June of 2014. We're also watching resistance of its TAS market profile high. That's at 48.78. If in fact light sweet crude is going to change its trend, it'll close above both of those numbers and maybe give you a bounce up into the $65 area. And that's what's going on with ticks T. If we go look at um, what do we want to look at? Let's go take a look at a couple of uh, mining equities out here. Uh, you've got Rand Gold off 90 cents and you've got uh, Gold Corp up 18 pennies. Let's start off by taking a look at uh, Rand Gold. Rand Gold right now trading out at $83 and 46 cents uh, down from Friday's close. But really considering the uh, retracements that we have seen in gold, the mining equities are holding their own out here. The next move to the upside inside of uh, Rand Gold would take it about 87 83 you're trading at 84 36 as we speak right now you'd like to see Rand Gold clear and close above 85 53 that's the high here from January 28th if we go take a look at Gold Corp ticker symbol here is GG uh, it's trading out at 24 14 it too just really hanging out at these highs it had a little key reversal session on the trading day of January 21st that high out there is $25 even Stephen, 25 bucks even Stephen. Also, it's Taz market profile high. A close above that would be continued bullishness for Gold Corp out there. Let's take a look at one more. Well, we can't take a look at one more because we're going into the break. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFNN. Dow's off 89 points, SP down nine. We'll be right back, folks. follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. 
Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 82, S&P off 8, uh, composites down uh, 37 points. Now, uh, let's uh, let's go take, I didn't get a chance to get to this during the uh, first uh, first hour of the uh, show, so uh, we're going to go take a look at it now. And, and if you're watching this on Tiger TV, I hope you are. Don't forget, uh, you can always catch the archive of this show if you listen on your radio, your mobile device. You can catch the archive of this show on Channel 10 on Tiger TV. Just come on over to the homepage of TFNN.com. I'll do my best to describe to you what it is that we're looking at now. This is the monthly chart for the Dow. So I want you to follow along with me here. Now, um, candlestick patterns are, whoops, didn't mean to do that. There we go, clean it up. Candlestick patterns are, are some of the most important uh, signals that the uh, market provides to both you and I. It's how the market communicates to us. And it uses these Japanese candlesticks out here. And, uh, and they're very important. Now, you don't just trade on candlesticks alone. You need to be utilizing other patterns out there. What happens with candlesticks is they confirm your patterns. It doesn't matter whether you're trading off of Bollinger Bands or ABCDs or, uh, um, you know, any pattern that's out there the market the only way for it to really communicate to you is through these signals now as we end as we uh, as we moved lower in january which by the way on average over the course of the last 84 years out there what we did in january um, is what we were supposed to do only it wasn't necessarily to the extent that we actually uh, did it with the volatility that was in play out there. And that's something to pay attention to. But let's just focus in on candlestick patterns as we speak right now. And what I want to do is I want to take you on a, a tour. I want you to pay attention to these last three months out here. These being November, 
uh, you can see that in December we had what's a, a doji candle. Now, doji candle means a whole lot up at the highs out here. It means more to me at highs than it does to uh, lows. It means more to me at resistance than it does at uh, support out here. And in essence, though, the communication of what does it mean, it means that the uh, market is, uh, is stalled. The market has lost its way. It's a neutral candle. It's a neutral candle until the following month comes along. In the following month, if you see a lower close, well, the Japanese have an expression. They like to say that the apples have fallen from the trees out there or the leaves have fallen from the trees. They don't say apples. They say the leaves have fallen from the trees. Well, if we take a look at what we have here in the month of uh, January, the leaves have fallen from the trees. We also have a three-candle configuration named for one of the great uh, generals that helped to unify Japan. Uh, general was Oda Nobunaga. We've got an Oda Nobunaga inside our uh, tiger's den out here. But what that is, it's, it's referred to as the Three River Evening Star. Now, that Three River Evening Star, that says you've got some real resistance now uh, at the highs from December. So 18,103.45 is going to be a key number for you to put on your pattern, on your uh, on your pad of paper out here. The reason is, is any close above that, February, March, April, any time it close above that, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. Now, fast forward backwards. How can we fast forward? Fast reverse back to 2007. I want you to pay attention to September's candle in 2007. Looks very similar to November of 2014. Then I want you to pay attention to October of 2007. Looks exactly like the candle that we had here in December with that little uh, with that little uh, doji candle out here. And then if you take a look at the uh, November 2007 time frame, basically the same candle configuration. So what had really called the highs in 2007 candle configuration on a monthly basis happens to be in play as we speak right now. Now couple of different things out here. First, I'm going to go ahead and put on what is one of the more reliable patterns to help to identify significant market tops and or bottoms. That's going to be relative strength, relative weakness. What I want you to notice back here, we're going to focus back here on 2007. We're just focusing in on the Dow here. So if you trade anything else, this conversation is not for you. Right. And what we're taking a look at is the high that formed out here in May of 2007. That's when the uh, strength, that's when the market, that's when market participants, that's when buyers had the largest amount of strength. The, the most amount of strength happened to be in May of 2007. Yet the market was able to push higher in that doji candle on October, uh, during the month of October of 2007. Unfortunately, it was doing it with less strength. Never a good sign when it's followed up with a reversal signal. Well, guess what? That is the reversal signal that took place here in November of 2007. Fast forward to where we're at today. The largest amount of strength that we had inside of this move was inside of, this is a move coming off of the 2011 area, it happened to be December 2013. So as we came into the end of December 2013, that's when the relative strength indicator got to its highest high out there. Guess what? We've got the exact same pattern that's in place right now that was in place at the tops in 2007. So we get back, though. Let's take a look at this a little further. Does that mean that you need to take any action as we speak right now? No, but you do need to be, and I need to be cognizant of the pattern that is in play as we speak. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $7. 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone phone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Dow's off 108, S&P down 11, uh, Composite down 40, Russell's off uh, 9 points. Let's go back to the uh, Dow. We're just uh, focused in on the uh, Dow, primarily because of the candle signal. So we got we have uh, candle signals. we got a reversal candle that called the top in 2007. The same pattern. Uh, that and this, this, worked in, uh, this worked prior to the 87 crash. I'm not predicting the crash, okay? I'm just saying that the uh, pattern here of moving higher, doing with less relative uh, strength out there, having a reversal signal, you know, was in place before 1929. It was at the 2000 top, as we're taking a look at here. Uh, all real major tops have that pattern in play. It's the most consistent pattern in play versus anything else that I've been able to identify and find. Whether it's a celestial pattern, whether it's a lunar pattern, whether it's any, and it's so easy to actually, uh, you know, they're, they're tools that are available on everybody's charting system out here. So that's what uh, makes things uh, easier. And if we take a look at, uh, so that's the first thing. Now, has the trend here changed inside of the uh, Dow? Well, the answer is no. I mean, if we take a look at, at this stage of the game, so it's a warning shot, and it's one to be careful of. If we take a look at uh, just simply a trend line as an example, so if we look at the trend line since 2009, we, we've got a couple of trend lines that we can uh, use out here. You know, there, there in essence is your trend line. If we take a look at uh, channel lines out here, channel lines mean we're going to go ahead and use the uh, body of the uh, candle. So let's go ahead and draw that in on our uh, chart. We'll probably use, that's a pretty 
pretty decent uh, channel line right there that I would uh, use. We're not going to worry so much about the uh, top, but you know that's probably the uh, that's probably the top of the uh, channel line as well, somewhere right around there. So we can see that that's still in place right here. So you're still in a rising price channel. You know maybe price is just simply going to pull back into the bottom uh, of it. Uh, if we take a look at even shorter term trend lines out here, so that's a longer term trend. Let's go ahead and let's turn that off. Let's take a look at a shorter term uh, trend line out here. Uh, I can just turn this one back on, I believe. That's just simply that one right there. That's the one coming up for the lows here in 2011. So that's going to be an important uh, trend for us to uh, focus on and pay attention to. Now, the reason why that's so important is because if we go back here, and I'm just going to leave this, you know, kind of a large format so you can take a look at it. If we were to identify the uh, trends out here, the channel lines and trends uh, from back at the uh, bottoms back in uh, 2002 out here, our March of 2003, when things began. In this case here, I like the uh, the verticality of, of this. How do you like that for a word out here? And if we take a look at uh, trend lines here coming off of that low back in March of uh, 2013, th this in essence would be your trend line. And I think that's really good trend line. The reason why I say that is because in, in 2007, when price broke below that level, which was back here in February 2008, what we saw was we saw price try to get back above that trend and it was rejected both in April and in May. So that was a real good trend line. So from the longer term perspective, if you know 401k accounts, things of that sort, you just want to be paying attention to these different trend lines. You want to be aware of those signals that are out there. But it's uh, if I go back here, we uh, take a look, we come back here. Now, what, what every reversal needs, it needs what Stevie likes to call second opinion. It means that the uh, very next candle session needs to confirm it. And uh, so we have to wait the entire month of February in order for that to occur. So continued pullback. Well, we get to watch what would happen at a, a trend line or a channel line out here as well. So that would be very helpful in revealing information uh, to us because if you see a break of that. Now, this is the shorter term one. We would have to take a look at the longer term one as well. Likewise, if February reverses this and we take this level out, remember, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. There's no question we've got a confirmed bearish pattern with this reversal signal. The way that uh, the way that uh, January closed out here. So. Uh, this is what we want to, in my opinion, this is something that we want to focus on and pay attention to. Remember, it's never Stevie that is bullish or bearish with regard to what's going on in the market. It is just simply the signals. It's about us just always stepping back, taking a look at the new information that the market reveals to us, and then uh, going ahead and saying, okay, this is what's going on in the market as we speak right now. That's all that I'm trying to do. One other thing that we can put up here on our uh, chart, well, we can put many different things that we want up here. We can take a look at the horizontal trading ranges. Here are your monthly horizontal uh, trading ranges. What else do we know about what? So it's interesting here. Now, these horizontal trading ranges, by the way, these are where we're taking a look at this is a monthly chart again this is where we're taking a look at uh horizontal levels of support and resistance. Now, inside the down, we're looking, we're just using the body of the candle. The body of the candle is truly the essence of price out here. Uh, the uh, wick or the uh, upper and lower shadows are nothing more than the extreme emotion, you know, the temper tantrum of the uh, market. But the body of the candle is where we really have the release of information for us, especially when we're identifying a, a trend lines, channel lines, or channel lines, I should say, out here. Well, in this case here, now we're looking at horizontal uh, channels, price channels, where price moves back and forth. Now, the interesting thing is these are, uh, because we're identifying, I'm using basically the two largest uh, areas where we have opens and closes. That happens to be right down here at the 10,446 area. You've got 39 points of contact within a small smidgen of a range out here. Your next uh, largest area happens to be the 12,269 uh, level. All you have to really do is take that price difference and then add it to and subtract it from the uh, bottom and the uh, top in order to get your continuing horizontal levels of support and resistance. Well, interestingly enough, uh, that's where the resistance of that uh, uh, candle session on uh, October of 2007, that reversal, that evening star reversal pattern took place. Now, is it a coincidence out here? I don't know. It depends on whether or not you believe in coincidences. What do we see take place at this uh, next area of resistance on its horizontal trading structure out here? The 17,737, and we've gotten that reversal. This would say that any continued 
move lower inside of the markets. Uh, what the Dow ought to do is boing, boing, boing is a uh, technical term, uh, and ought to uh, move down and uh, test the 15,915 level. So if we see continued weakness, it's that 15,915 level that's going to provide us with the most amount of information. And that is taking a look at the Dow, and that is doing it in detail on the uh, monthly charts out there. And I just believe that it was important to really share that information uh, with you. Now, let's take a look at what's going on inside the uh, VIX index out here. If we take a look at the uh, VIX index, it's trading out at uh, 2156. It's outside of its uh, 50 period uh, Bollinger Band with a, a one standard deviation uh, that is out here uh, inside of the uh, market. Uh, you know, once the uh, VIX gets above that 50 day exponential moving average, that's where we know that there's damage that can be done. That 50 day line is at 1770 or 2155 as we speak right now. If we look at the summation index here for each of the uh, markets, if we look at the New York Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange has held up the most, believe it or not, compared to the uh, Dow, compared to the S&P, compared to the uh, Russell 2000. New York Stock Exchange uh, just trading into the December 16th swing point out here. That swing point low is 10.360 and the high is 10.583 or 10.532 as we speak right now. You get inside a swing point, volume or not, says you can go test the low. There is a little hammer candle down here on the daily chart for the NYSE and that says, hey, it ought to find some support at 10.442.79. That level has not been tested as Stock exchange, our price oscillated below zero, says the summation is turned down. That says that the sellers are in control of the New York Stock Exchange. Inside of the composite, absolutely in control. We saw the, NY, or we saw the NASDAQ composite get above the uh, price oscillator that was back on January 26th, and then it was rejected. So the bulls, the, ba the bulls, the buyers had control for one day and just simply uh, failed to do anything with it. On the other hand, the composite has only done a 0.382 retracement, and we're not below that level right now. So the market is doing everything in its power to hold itself up out here. Uh, these are the messages. We just went from the monthly message now down to the uh, daily message out here. If we take a look at the uh, Dow. Uh, as well and look at its uh, price oscillator, its summation index. If we look at that out here, we know the Dow has made a, a slightly lower low, meaning it is testing the December 16th level. That December 16th low inside of the Dow is 17067. It's been tested. It's been rejected. You're at 17,113 as we speak right now. I'm not, uh, the one to one, and it's made now. It's completed a one to one A to B equals C D to the uh, downside. That price projection was uh, 17,000. 081. So it's got that in place as we speak. I'm not sure why I put, oh, I know why I put there. I'm not going to go into it as we speak. Nonetheless, inside the Dow, clearly, the uh, sellers have control. Price oscillator down around two, minus 2.3. That is really not at the uh, levels of a oversold bounce. In order for that to occur, you need to get down to about a minus 3.5, minus uh, 4, somewhere right in that range out there. It gives you a, a decent area for a oversold bounce. That that is not what is in place inside of the Dow as we speak right now. Uh, back here, take a look at the uh, ES Mini S&P futures. Until the ES Mini is able to uh, break through this descending price channel, one has to assume that moves lower and any bounces up into the top of that uh, price channel should be sold at this point in time. And we see a break of that level and a test of that area. Then that bodes pretty well for the uh, for a change in trend inside of the uh, market. Boy, how about this on the 120 minute chart though and take a look at the ES that is one heck of a potential uh, hammer candle out here this ends however not until the 12 noon so a lot of time left before we even want to focus in on that candle formation and that is inside the ES mini if we come take a look at uh, I think somebody had some questions maybe it was just about might have just been about I might have covered it already that was on the valley yeah, I think that it was I think so I think I've covered everything but uh, if I haven't you can go ahead and type in a question in Inside of the uh, uh, inside of the uh, Tigers, then I'll be happy to uh, get to it. Uh, things that are moving here to the upside and to the uh, downside. Um, let's take a uh, look at uh, Tesla. Tesla T S L A ticker symbol up three percent this morning, up six dollars in change. I don't see any news uh, behind it, uh, but if we uh, do take a look at it, let's go take a look at what Tesla has done. Tesla formed an A to B equals C D. No, it has not completed that. Uh, to complete that, it would need to get down to about the 161 level. It has found support. 
a little bit of a hammer candle down here. It happened to be at the uh, Taz Market Profile Low. That was on January 20th. And that low out there at 187.04. Resistance, 214.78. It's Taz Market Profile. How you're trading at 210. Volume so far today, about 1.3 million shares out here. Um, what else do we see inside of uh, Tesla? I don't see anything else of any significance uh, worth reporting. I, I do see this descending price channel. Well, let's go. That's worth reporting. So let's go uh, pay attention uh, to that. Let me put that in the system for you. Why, why, why is that doing that? Let me. Oh, that makes it easy. There we go. So let's take a look at its descending price channel from its uh, highs out here. Let's see if we can draw this in. Let's see. So there is going to be this is where Tesla, in essence, has been uh, traveling within those yellow lines on my screen. We'll pull this back. Maybe it'll save itself. So there's your descending price channel for Tesla. It really needs to clear that area, uh, which is in about the 229, 230 level in order for it to break its uh, downtrend out there. Also moving here to the upside, we've got, well, Amazon. Let's go check in on Amazon. A wide gap yesterday on uh, Friday. Big volume behind its move. Uh, Amazon uh, doing everything it can to really close its gaps out here. Um, this did not have a, a three-gap play, but its uh, open window is priced out at about 358.61. You're at 58 uh, 358.87 right now. When you close a window, it no longer acts as a resistance. Uh, in the in the case of Amazon, a big break. Let me put this on a, a weekly time frame, a little bit easier, maybe to uh, look at. Uh, it has uh, broken through. For first, what we know about Amazon is that it uh, held its uh, trend line off of the uh, 2008 uh, time frame out here. So it did a great job of being able to hold that uh, trend line, and uh, also has now broken the uh, trend line that it had formed to the uh, downside. So it looks like the uh, Amazon here is. Uh, let me come on, come on, do this here. Come on, do this for me. There's your trend to the downside. And this thing was broken with the conviction. You know, this is the weekly chart. Volume on a weekly basis, 41 million shares. That's how you break a trend for sure. And traveling into only 32 million shares from the week of July, uh, 20, uh, July, the week that began July 21st out here. So uh, Amazon uh, looks like it's going to go ahead and make a run for its highs. If we take a look at retracements out here, uh, go from the high, whoops, I mean to do that. Not that it makes a big deal, but if we do go from its highs down to the low, again, this is a weekly chart that we're looking at. It's also made the 0.618 retracement level. That was priced out at 361 and a quarter. Uh, the interest session high so far today, 361.20. Off by a nickel. Not too uh, shabby out there. Uh, you came into a 0.618 retracement level, the wide ranging bar with volume, the way that it did, the way that it did, the way that it did out there. It says 381.83 is next up on its move. Well, if you get to 381 inside of Amazon, why not go test out the swing point high out there? Because the low of that swing point is 387. And I suspect that is where Amazon wants to uh, head to. Uh, to the uh, downside out here, let's see, what do we got biggest to the downside? Google, Intercept Pharmaceuticals, what else? Uh, Percentage-wise, what's going on with this uh, symbol out here? ARDX, what are they? Uh, oh, phase 2 trial looks like uh, they probably did not, did not get the type of results that they were looking for there. What else do we have out here? Regenerative Pharmaceuticals. Let's go take a look at a big a big name out here. REGN is the uh, ticker symbol. Here is the uh, weekly chart for Regeneron. Just simply trading sideways. No big deal out there. Let's go see what the daily chart is telling us, though. Uh, right now, Regeneron down with 178,000 uh, shares so far today. That does not look to be a big deal, but support inside of Regeneron is uh, last at this uh, breakout level from October 17th. That's down around 362. You're trading at 410 as we speak right now. We've got the uh, Dow. She is off about uh, 61 points. S&P off five. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 32. Uh, hey, over on the homepage of uh, TFNN.com, we uh, just got up here. I'm going to be doing a uh, free uh, workshop, a uh, workshop uh, this uh, coming, not, the, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. So February the uh, 10th out there, I'm going to be doing a, a workshop. It's all about the uh, volatility index and, uh, and some extraordinary tools that you want to make sure that you are aware of. In fact, if you trade the volatility index at all, this is a workshop that uh, you need to make a, a must. Now, I did a, some 
some significant studies over the uh, weekend, taking a look at the last 84 years worth of data. This past January, by the way, uh, ranked as number uh, fifth, number 16 as far as volatile uh, Januaries out there. And so there are some very important messages that go well beyond what we just took a look at inside of the uh, Dow during that the last segment. So come on over to the homepage of TFNN.com. You can sign up for it. Uh, you get into it by just simply uh, uh, getting by uh, subscribing to a free 30-day uh, trial of uh, my Mastering Probability newsletter. So really, it's a very easy thing for you to get into, and you're going to learn information that you're going to want to be able to have forever for uh, trading out there. Hey, let's go out to uh, Framingham, uh, Massachusetts, to uh, uh, to Charlie. Uh, Charlie, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. We're getting a little bit snowed in, but uh, I'm indoors. <laughs> ah, good, good. Hey, how'd you like that? How'd you like the outcome of that uh, football game? There is a god. Ah, ah, yes, there is. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty amazing. Pretty good game out there. I know we don't have a lot of time. You yeah. wanted to take a look at the TZA. So tell me what you're doing, what you're yeah. thinking, how I can help you. I'm long. Um, I got in there at uh, uh, somewhere around 1271. So I'm kind of got a little bit of a profit um, just wondering how high it might go well specifically in the TZA sure, so you're in about 1271 you know if we take a look at uh, just the short term uh, tools I've got the daily chart up on my screen here what you would like to see is you would like to see a close above 1331 you'd really like to see a close above the high from January 16th and that price is uh, 1365 now TZA at that swing point on January 16th that's 17 million shares you've done 6.4 million shares so far in an hour and 20 minutes worth of trading so it's moving into that level with volume. The question is, is it going to close above it or just test that high of 1365? If you can close above that, you can close above the 1331. That looks like it may bode well for you. It's also going into the December 16th level that's got 22 million shares. That probably is maybe your better benchmark, uh, Charlie, is the December 16th level out here. So far this morning, it's tested the low of 1366. I believe it's tested. No, it hasn't tested the low. But that's a swing point that I would really focus on. Uh, if you close above 1331, that is your TAS market profile resistance level. Um, if you can't break that, uh, maybe it goes back and it tests the uh, support area in that 1231 area. So what's the time frame that you're looking at on this uh, trade out here? I'd say about a month. About a month. month. Yeah, so at this stage here, the market's been consolidating. No idea which way that thing might uh, break, might might break out here. You know, I'd have to say if you've got a, a stop somewhere below 1186 to close below 1186 maybe at that stage you're on the wrong side of the trade or at least the uh, the low the most recent low inside TZA looks like about 1151 or so so those would be the parameters that I would use but you're looking for a close most certainly you'd like to see a close today above 1331 you're at 1318 right now all right, my friend. Okay, excellent, Steve. Thank you. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. Hey, folks, uh, stay tuned. Basil Chapman is up next. Of course, it's Marvelous Monday. That means after Basil, we've got Larry Pesavento, Daryl Martin, David White, and the Tom O'Brien Show. Don't forget, come on over to the homepage of TFNN.com. Right under uh, breaking news, or certainly in the uh, uh, in the uh, left hand side, uh, go ahead and sign up for the workshop. It's going to be next Wednesday at 5:30 in the uh, afternoon. About an hour workshop out there, and this is one you absolutely want to be at. Have a great. Uh, Monday, folks. Look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care now. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.